And now many cars have done the, the whatever Volkswagen uh, number. Wait, the indicative nature of it. Why can I not remember that freaking line? What am I doing? Is this thing still running? All right. Then under delivering, under delivering, under. Yeah, I'm never going to get that right. What the heck are those grounds people doing out there now? Are they trimming bushes or are they sawing people in half? And a bunch of other stuff that I didn't bother to memorize. Easily van dies. Van dies. Oh, that wasn't even a good beginning. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Top Fives. I'm Jax, and today we're counting down the top five most overrated new cars on sale today. If you're in the market for a new car, the options are almost limitless. There are many great cars to choose from, but kind of like Chipotle or Blake Lively's face, some of them tend to be criminally overrated. Here's a list of the top five most overrated new cars you can buy. To help you avoid making a tragic mistake, like the time you pulled on the push door to the bathroom or bought Rihanna's new album. Number five, the BMW M3 slash M4. Let's be clear, the E30 M3, legend. The E46 M3, legend. The current M3, not so much. It doesn't help that the entire sports sedan field has advanced quite a bit in the past 30 years, making the M3 feel far less special. But BMW certainly isn't helping matters by producing a turbocharged, overpriced, under-delivering power beast that has to fake its own exhaust note by pumping it through the cabin speakers. That's the automotive equivalent of putting a playing card on the spokes of your bicycle to make it sound like a dirt bike, when everybody knows that your parents don't love you enough to actually buy you a dirt bike, or the rest of the playing cards. Number four, the Volkswagen GTI. Yes, the GTI is a fantastic car, and it popularized the notion of cheap speed and the hot hatch, but the game has changed. The competition is now caught up, and in some cases, they've improved upon the GTI's formula. Honda was making far more interesting engines in the 90s. Mazda helped make hatches cool again in the 2000s. And there are a number of other cars currently on sale that drive almost as well, get as good or better fuel economy, and are just as practical. Combine that with Volkswagen's famously awful reliability and maintenance costs, and you're left wondering what makes the GTI so special, aside from plaid seats. The GTI has become Madonna. You've paid a premium to watch a former legend try to recapture her glory, but at the end of the night, you just paid a lot of money to watch an AARP member strut around the stage in clothes that justice wouldn't sell your 12-year-old. Number three, the Toyota Camry. America's best-selling sedan has little left going for it other than superb reliability. The Camry was never stylish, but it had the sort of dignified reliability that you look for in a Tom Hanks film. It would get you from point A to point B, and you wouldn't have felt like you wasted your money. But today's Camry is more like Tom Brokaw rather than Tom Hanks. You can absolutely trust it, but it's about as exciting as the diapers worn by the people that drive them. The Toyota Camry might be the only car that actually depreciates the value of the driver when it pulls off the dealer lot. Number two, the Jeep Wrangler. The Jeep Wrangler is an icon, one of the few vehicles that is solely dedicated to doing one thing better than any other form of transportation, when it's properly equipped. When it's not properly equipped, it's nothing more than a terrible riding, easily vandalized and embarrassingly slow car for a high school girl who got good grades for like one semester, but we all know she's still gonna end up going to cosmetology school. Properly equipping a Wrangler for off-road duty requires quite a bit of cash, and it does nothing to address the Wrangler's inherent shortcomings. But preparing a Wrangler for a lifetime of waiting for its owner to get off work at Hooters, well, that doesn't cost anything. Number one, the Ford Mustang. Now, all Mustang jokes aside, and I do love a good Mustang driving into a crowd meme, the Mustang in its base and GT forms is just a decent car that's trading on its name, nostalgia, and the addictive nature of cheap speed and vehicular homicide. It's the kind of car for people who aren't sure which end of the popsicle to hold, or who think fine dining means going to Longhorn and ordering an appetizer before the meal. The Mustang is little more than a stylish car that teachers and secretaries buy to reward themselves for half a career of hard work. It's a looker whose best days are behind her, but she will not go quietly into the good night. Honorable mentions, the Nissan GTR. 
Now, listening to fanboys gush over Godzilla's performance statistics is about as much fun as a dentist drill boring its way into your tooth enamel. Godzilla's a decade old, and it used to be able to slay cars twice its price. That's not the case anymore, or even its exact price. Knowing model designations such as R32 or R34 or some other PlayStation-based knowledge doesn't really impress anyone anymore. Godzilla's become less Godzilla and more marine iguana. It's time for an update, Nissan. The Mazda Miata. Does the Mazda Miata drive as well as everyone says? Yes. Perhaps you haven't noticed, but we live in a society where it is sometimes useful for a car to do more than one thing and carry items larger than nail clippers and have a roof. Also, when driving a Miata, pretty much every other vehicle on the road, even 10 year old girls on bicycles becomes a potentially fatal accident. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this list of the five most overrated cars on sale today. As always, thanks for tuning in, and if you have any suggestions for future editions of Top 5, please leave them in the comments down below. I'm Jax, I'll catch you next time. Peace.